Welcome back to the Robin Word, and we are continuing on with the life of Solomon. And uh, at this point, we are looking at uh, the the coronation or the the setting up, establishing of Solomon as king. However, we are really introduced to this with a lot of drama going on. Uh, it's not as simple as, "Hey, Solomon should be king." <laughs> It's not that simple. There's a lot of drama going on. And really, this is based off of 2 Samuel chapter 11 and 12, uh, where one of the consequences of uh, the adultery with Bathsheba and then the, uh, the murder of Uriah the Hittite is that there will always be drama. There will always be conflict within uh, the house of David. And um, as long as David's alive for the rest of his life. And and it's definitely the case in his old and advanced years, as we see in 1 Kings chapter 1. So turn to 1 Kings chapter 1. We're going to start out in verse 5. Um, so you have... So you have a couple of sons of David dead at this point. You have Amnon uh, murdered by Absalom, and then you have Absalom, uh, who was who was killed um, by Joab and some soldiers uh, as well. And so you you have Solomon, but you also have a a young man named Adonijah, uh, who is born after. Absalom was born. So it's possible that he's the second oldest, maybe, uh, but uh, basically it, it's an older son than, Abs than Solomon. Sorry. It's an older son than Solomon. So according to this time, Adonijah should be the king. Uh, however, he goes about it all wrong. Um, verse 5 of 1 Kings chapter 1. Now Adonijah, the son of Hagit, uh, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. His father had never at any time displeased him by asking, uh, Why have you done this, thus and so? He was also a very handsome man, and he, went, and he was born next after Absalom. He conferred with Joab, the son of Zariah, and with, Abiar, Ath, and with Abiathar, the priest. And they followed Adonijah and helped him. But Zadok, the priest, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan, the prophet, and Shimei, and Ray, and David's mighty men were not with Adonijah. Adonijah sacrificed sheep, oxen, and batting calf by the serpent stone, which is beside in Rogel. And he invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and the royal officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benaiah, or the mighty men, or Solomon his brother. So, you have Adonijah, who could have become king just naturally, uh, because he's older than Solomon. However, he goes about it like he is trying to take over. Uh, verse 5 is actually pretty similar to when Absalom uh, begins his or begins his conspiracy to take over the throne uh, from David in the book of 2 Samuel. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. But so you have this point, uh, he's He's basically trying to take the throne. Uh, there are some people that aren't okay with that. Uh, Nathan the prophet and Queen Bathsheba being two of them. Uh, so in verses 11 through 27, uh, they basically go to David. Hey, do you know this is going on? And that uh, leads to David uh, proclaiming Solomon to be the king. Uh, so verse 28. Then King David answered, Call Bathsheba to me. So she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore, saying, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my soul out of every adversity, as I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, saying, Solomon your son shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place, even so while I do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground, paid homage to the king, and said, May my lord, King David, live forever. So you have David uh, basically 
re reiterating the fact that Solomon won't be king, but it's interesting that it begins with an adoration of the Lord here. Um, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my soul out of every adversity? And one of those adversities is happening right now with this drama. With this drama, uh, who will be the next king? Will it be Adonijah? Will it be Solomon? Will it be another one of the sons? Um, but it's really between Adonijah and Solomon. Um, but you have this drama, and yet he proclaims the Lord is the one who will see him through uh, any adversity, including this one. And so I think that's interesting to to see from David and, uh, and encouraging as well. Um, verse 32, King David said, Call to me Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. So they be, so they came before the king. The king said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and have Solomon, my son, ride on my own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet there anoint him king over Israel. Then blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. You shall then come up after him, and he shall come and sit on my throne, for he shall be king in my place. And I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my lord, the king, say so. As the Lord has been with my lord, the king, even so may he be with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites and the Pelathites went down and had Solomon ride on King David's mule and brought him to Gihon. There Zadok the priest took the horn of oil from the tent and anointed Solomon. Then they blew the trumpet and all the people said, Long live King Solomon. And all the people went up after him, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth was split by their noise. So a couple things here. Uh, It's interesting to see the coronation ceremony, uh, the difference between Saul that we saw within, within the life of Samuel. Uh, which was filled with uh, with fear and with wanting to be like other nations. And whereas here, there's so much more joy. There's so much more celebration. Uh, there is no fear when it comes to Solomon being king. Uh, there is drama with Adonijah, and we'll see how he responds to all this. Uh, but when it comes to Solomon being king, though, uh, there is no hesitation. Uh, and when David puts Solomon on his own mule, it's not just that he is putting him on display uh, for everybody to see that he is king, but but putting him on his own mule is a very kingly thing to do, a very royal thing to do, uh, but it also is, it's made pretty clear that it's very much a uh, an endorsement, kind of what we see uh, today when people run for president. Um, David is endorsing Solomon as the next king. And with that, that really kind of ends Adonijah's basically trying to be a king. Uh, but let's see what that looks like. Verse 41. Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they finished feasting. And when Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, What does this uproar in the city mean? Now, here's the interesting thing. With the celebration, too, of Solomon becoming king, did you notice how it was described? The noise was so great that it split the earth. And it just makes me go, Golly, can you imagine if we did the same thing? Not with our president, (laughs) but when it comes to our worship of our Savior, just having that same passion. Uh, I'm not saying go around and like acting nuts, just to act nuts. Uh, But I'm just saying when you and I come into the presence of God uh, on Sundays, on Wednesdays, uh, whenever you go to church, and really whenever we are spending time with the Lord in prayer and uh, in Bible study, we should do so with so much passion uh, and with so much joy because of everything that the Lord has done uh, for us. So I think that's a 
I think that's a good thing to see there. Verse 42. While he was still speaking, Joab, behold, Jonathan the son of Abiathar the priest came, and Adonijah said, Come in, for you are a worthy man, and bring good news. Jonathan answered Adonijah, No, for our lord King David has made Solomon king. And the king has sent with him Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Carathites and the Pelathites. And they had him ride on the king's mule. And Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon. And they have gone up from the, their rejoicing, so that the city is in an uproar. This is the noise that you have heard. Solomon sits on the royal throne. Moreover, the king's servants came to congratulate our lord King David, saying, May your God make the name of Solomon more famous than yours, and make his throne greater than your throne. And the king bowed himself on the bed. And the king also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has granted someone to sit on my throne this day, my own eyes seeing it. Then all the guests of Adonijah trembled and rose, and each went his own way. And Adonijah feared Solomon, so he arose and went and took hold of the horns of the altar. So, before we get to that, you have this messenger just basically go through what we have just seen in this chapter. Uh, but it's interesting that he makes note of Solomon riding the king's mule. But then, too, you have this wonderful talk about the Lord setting up Solomon as king in verses 47 and 48, and how important that is. That is the last thing that the messenger says. Um, now, it would make sense if it was the first thing, too. But basically, he's not just shoehorning it in there. It's very important that Adonijah and the people that are with him are aware of the fact that not only is David backing uh, Solomon as king, but the Lord is backing Solomon as king. And I think this is what causes the fear and the trembling uh, that we see um, in verses Forty in verses forty nine and fifty, um, obviously the people don't want to be <laughs> to be a part of a treasonous uh, act, of course. Uh, but I think it's important to see uh, that the mention of the Lord being behind Solomon gives so much weight to his claim to be king. So when you and I, as believers, as we are going through life, um, that should give us so much encouragement, knowing that whatever we are doing, um, when we are called by the Lord to something, whatever that is, we are backed, not just by the call, but by the Lord himself. Um, so whether that is you being in uh, business, or whether it is uh, you being in whatever vocation you're in, whether that is you being a stay-at-home mom, whether that is you being at a certain college, um, whatever situation you are in that you feel called to, uh, it's not just the fact that you'll feel called to that, which makes it so important, but it's the fact that the Lord backs you being there. He wants you there. He has led you there. That is what a beautiful statement that is, and how comforting that is, too. Because just because you are meant to be somewhere, and you are called to be there, that does not mean it's always going to be great. There are going to be moments where you are going to to, to really ponder and ask questions. Uh, whether Hey, should I be here? Should I be doing this? Um, and this passage kind of gives us the, the the confidence to say, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so verse 51, let's wrap this up here uh, with the horns of the altar and Adonijah. That was told Solomon, behold, Adonijah fears King Solomon. For behold, he has laid hold of the horns of the altar, saying, let King Solomon swear to me first that he will not put his servant to death with the sword. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, not one of his hairs shall fall to the earth. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and paid homage to King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go to your home. So you already see a little bit of the wisdom of Solomon here. Um, you have his older brother, who basically 
forced himself onto the throne, even if he was older, that doesn't mean that he's guaranteed to have that throne. Um, Solomon could have put him to death for treason right then and there, but he doesn't. And he does so in a very wise manner. He doesn't say, look, you're my brother. You're fine. It was just a gaffe on your part. You're okay. There's no problem. No, but at the same time, he's also just like, you're done. Off with his head. Instead, he's like, look, I, I get it. it, it it's, it, it's uh, look, if you are willing to just say that you've made a mistake um, that or and to not do that again, or try to usurp uh, me now that not only has David backed me, our father, uh, who is the current king, but the Lord has backed me. If you're willing to obey that and respect that, we'll be fine. But if you're not willing to, then we will have problems. Um, and so I think you already see a little bit of the wisdom of Solomon coming through here, even though his prayer for wisdom doesn't happen until 1 Kings chapter 3. But here you really do have um, just a little bit of a glimpse into the wisdom of Solomon. So next time we will look at... Um, the beginning of Solomon's reign, which is uh, like his first acts of, as king, uh, which is getting instructions from David uh, and then to uh, just establishing his reign. So with that being said, I will see you next week for the Brahmin Word. Thanks.